Jeff. Good evening, Jeff. Um, our group would like to present you with an air warehouse analysis and design. Before the start of the presentation, let me introduce you with my teammates. This is Anne, Jasmine, Windy, Yannis, and Matt. So, uh, we'll start, I'll start the analysis. Before starting our analysis, I will give you a brief introduction of our project background. Uh, the company is an optical equipment manufacturer. It has well established over 10 years of production experience. Due to the indus industry nature, the product is highly customized. So the company has more than 900 prototypes. So uh, when the company grow grows up, it has a problem in the inventory of their is a warehouse. Although its warehouse is more than 8,000 cubic feet per year, however, is still not uh, working very good. So our task is to make it better. Uh, as you know that uh, using a shared strategy, uh, so solid strategy, it has a lot of uh, shortcoming, including uh, the location of product change over time. So the workers have the workers has to be directed by the WMS, which are time consuming and then require a packer to be more disciplined. So we would like to improve this. The objectives include uh, to better utilize the warehouse capacity and improve the packing process efficiencies and minimize the set of costs. So our solution is to introduce a fast packing area which we like with low enhancements, which comes with a product categorization, the design what to put into the fast packing area, and then an allocation strategy, strategies that will minimize the restock. Uh, per cubic feet. And then finally, we come to an equipment selection to, to justify what rack we would like to use for the fast picking area. And finally, we come to a cost evaluation that will justify our analysis. So I'll introduce Matt to you uh, for ABC analysis. Okay, I will introduce what to, to start in a dedicated storage. We, we use ABC analysis to make a decision. All items will be di divided into three categories, A, B, and C. Before I give you a first introduction of ABC items, let me first introduce the formula of the annual consumption value, which equals to annual demand multiplied item cost per unit. A items has the highest annual con consumption level and, uh, and its value is about 70 to 18 percent. B items has a medium, medium, medium annual consumption level and the value is about 50 to 25 percent, while C items has a low risk annual consumption level. And the, the value is also the lowest, about only 5%. Here we have a combination of statistics which covers 50 days record of a warehouse. There are totally uh, 940 kinds of SKU in the warehouse. And uh, the, the axis represents the kinds of uh, stock stock keeping unit. The ordinate on the left side represents the accumulated, accumulated percentage of all the items. The ordinate on the right side represents uh, the flow numbers of each item. After a series of calculations, we have this figure. From this figure, we can see the SKU of category A is 143 and the percentage is only 11.26 which is really small however the total number of, of category the total number of category A is nearly 2300 which occupy 60% of total product products so we can see category A is frequently picked. So we need a 
we need a fast pick area for category A to reduce the picking cost. Next, I will invite Jasmine to give you a further, further introduction of design of a faster pick area. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Matt. Next, we come to the question that how many cubic should be stored in faster area? Here, little slot is applied to figure out the number. First put is the total alpha of type A products, which is 153.88 cubic per day. And the cycle time, in other words, the, stop, uh, the restock period week is that is five days. By multiplying these two numbers, we can come up with the WIP, which is also the stall volume, 769.4 cubic in a faucet area. Allocation st uh, strategy, which aims to minimize the restock per cubic feet, uh, is, uh, would be the next problem to be solved. Um, different strategies would lead to different results and here we compare the results per cubic feet for three strategy alternatives. If we use EQS strategy, the allocated volume VI would equals to the total volume V divided by N. Here N stands for the kinds of SKUs. Um, as for EQT strategy, VI is proportional to the uh, to each SKU's outflow contribution to the total outflow. And while the VI is proportional to each SKU's square foot of outflow divided by the sum of each SKU's square foot of outflow. By applying the first uh, answers from the first row, we can come up with uh, the results per cubic feet for these three strategies. And we can see that uh, the OPT strategy which we we'll adopt is with the minimum restores per cubic feet. So next, um, Yanis and Andrew will tell us uh, how the solution of rest would influence our cost. In the following, I'm going to introduce the equipment selection of the in the fast packing area. In our case, there were two studies. Uh, of rack. The first one is gravity from rack, the second one is standard rack. So the first one is gravity from rack. This is this graphic show how it works. So let's look at this side view. In the inbound process, the operator will pick the SKU from the reachable level and the inbound SKU will fall automatically to different after every uh, pickup. So as for the restock, the operator will fill the rack from the back of the rack. So it is make use of the first in, first out application. Besides, it is it can increase the order picking efficiency. Um, the second one, because it make use of the length of the rack. So a uh, modulator of the rack is available in the market to enlarge the uh, maximum volume of the storage. So for the stand, uh, second one, this is a sta standard rack. So as it is standard and simple, it is commonly commonly used in the market. Um, it is it doesn't need any customization and less maintenance is needed. That's why uh, the price is relatively low in the market, and you can easily find a substitute. Uh, but the inbound process is totally different. Um, we recommend the uh, operator to uh, store the SKU in the edge of the rack instead of the inner space because it is uh, difficult to take the uh, SKU from inner space to outside. So go back to our case, uh, uh, Jasmine told us that uh, we have 143 SKU in our first uh, fast packing area and it's almost 770 cubic. Uh, pending to be stored in the um, fast packing area. So in the following, M will introduce how many racks to be installed in the fast packing area and the build up cost. Okay, thank you Yanis for your introduction. So now let's see the equipment selection. So which rack is better? So we have two choices. In order to achieve our goal of management and save money, 
we need to think uh, very carefully about cost. So the gravity cost, uh, gravity drag cost, and standard drag cost. So after collecting all the data and analyzing all the data from previous steps, we can know that we need 459 locations for the gravity rack. But if we choose standard rack, we need 314 storage locations. And for the numbers of locations in one rack, we need to care about this part. Because in the fast pick area, we can now share the location with two products. So if there is a vacancy in one location, we can now put another product in this, in this location. So the location in one rack for gravity rack is 25, and for standard rack is also 25. And next thing is the capacity of these storage locations. So the standard rack can save a, a lot of a lot of space, so it can it has three space to store all the all the products. But for the gravity rack, we only have two uh, space to allocate all the products. And then we can calculate the number of racks we need. For the gravity rack, we need 19 of them. But if we choose the other racks, we only need 13 of them. So let's see the cost. So if we buy one rack, we can use it for five years. So we use the depreciation for one year as our annual cost. So the cost we need to pay for gravity rack is 800, and the standard rack is 450. Then we get the total cost for these two racks. So in order to um, in order to calculate all the cost we need for our plastic area, we need to concentrate the cost in three aspects. The first one is the equipment cost, and we have mentioned that before in the previous slide. And the second one is the space cost. The last one is fitting cost. The space cost depends on the space we need to allocate all the racks, and it also depends on the money we need to pay for each square meter. And for the picking cost, picking activity is the most important activity in basic area, so we need to concentrate a lot on this part. Then we can get the formula for our cost calculation. The total cost is the sum of the cost of equipment, the cost of space, and the cost of picking activity. For the cost of equipment, it should be the cost of depreciation for one year multiplied by the number of racks we need. The second one, the space cost. It depends on the money we need to pay for each square meter and the space we need to allocate all the racks. And the third one is the picking activity. The cost we need to pay uh, is composed of the two parts. The first part, the money we need to pay the workers and the money we need to pay for the operating machine for us to pick, pick the products. And the second part is the, all the time we need to pick all the stuff for whole year. So multiply the money with the time we can get the cost we need. Then we get the, all the results of our calculation. So for the equipment cost, the standard rack can save us a lot of money. However, when we see the space cost and the picking cost, the gravity, gravity rack can save a lot of space. So we don't need to pay so much on the space cost. And for the picking activity, we don't need to pay so much for gravity rack, so it can save us a lot of money. So the final result is we only need to pay 3 million and six thousand and six hundred and ninety-seven thousand and six hundred and twenty-seven dollars for gravity rack, which much lower than the other rack. So for our public area, we need to choose the gravity rack. So next, let's welcome Wendy to introduce us about our whole conclusion of our project. Um, thank you, Andrew. Now, let me conclude our project to you. Uh, firstly, we categorize all of our products into three categories. Those are A, B, and C. Uh, based on the proportion of their annual consumption value, and among which the category A has the fastest flow rate, 
and then we decided that we should utilize the OPT strategy to determine how to allocate space to each SKU. And finally, we also made a comparison between gravity flow rack and the standard rack to determine which rack we should use in our warehouse. And in the calculation, we decided that we should calculate the equipment cost, space cost, and the picking cost. And after all of this calculation, we decided that the gravity uh, flow rack is a better choice. And in conclusion, in our project, we totally designed a um, new warehouse that in which the category A, which has the um, fastest flow rate, should be stored in a um, fast picking area with gravity flow rack. So that's all about our project. Thank you.